Good morning and welcome to the July 5th, 2021 devotional title today is Listening and Waiting, two things that most people in life have a real tough time doing um, and certainly something that we have to learn as Christians uh, it needs to be a big part of our Christian faith and our Christian walk is to listen and wait on God <clears throat> for his discernment and for what he has for our life and for the decision-making process. Um, this morning, I want to ask how how many times have you been dealing with spiritually that you need an answer to something? You need to know where to go, what direction to go, uh, where God is leading you. Um, then I will tell you that we have to learn to listen, and we have to learn to um, wait uh, on God in his timing and his discernment and his ways and not our own. We want everything right now. We need to know discernment right this minute. Tell me exactly what you want from me. Uh, but we learn how to uh, walk closer with God when we have to rely upon him for our everything and have to rely upon him for the answers. And um, so we have to learn to be patient and wait on that. But that's just not a character trait that most people in general like and certainly not most Christians. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to give you a quick little uh, study here today, hopefully, because uh, I'm sure that there are many of you out there trying to get an answer to something. You need an answer for what it is that God has for your life or has for the life around you, the situation that you're a part of. You just need discernment to know exactly where God is leading and exactly what God's answer is for your life uh, and for the path that God wants you to follow. So we're going to start out today in the book of Habakkuk, and we're going to be in chapter 1 and verse 2. And before I read that, I want to tell you, if you've got time after this devotion, go back and read the entire book of Habakkuk. It's only three chapters. It's not very long, uh, but very, very informing to a Christian and non-Christians about how to understand that God has a plan and he has a purpose and he has a way of making a decision about something. And where we may be in one respect, when we start, when God gets done with us, then we're totally different on the other side, as long as we submit 100% to him. So spiritually, you may be in a dark place right now. Physically, you may be in a dark place right now. And this is where Habakkuk was uh, spiritually at this particular moment when uh, he starts off the book. There is a difference at the end of the book, which is why I'm telling you to go ahead and read the whole thing when you get a chance, but this is the only part we're using this morning. Uh, Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 2 says, O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou will not hear? So this was Habakkuk's uh, thought process that he's crying out to God and God's not hearing him. Um, why are you not hearing me, God? But see, we, we just assume that when we don't get the answer we want or that we don't understand the direction immediately five seconds after asking God for his help, that he's not listening. He can't hear us. He's not really hearing what we need and what we want. But that's because we want instant gratification. We want instant answerings to what it is that we're, uh, that we're asking of God. But we learn more. We understand more. We get better discernment when we wait on God and his timing and the way he does things. So the next we're going to change over to Psalm and we're going to be in 37, 7. And it says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Meaning just wait on God, wait on him and his discernment and his time and what he has for us. And God will bring about the understanding of what you need. He just may not do it in the time that you're looking for. He may not do it in the speed that you're looking for, but he'll do it in the perfect right time, exactly when you need to know the answer. If you're asking the question based on the will of God and you truly trying to seek God's full will, then he will give you that discernment if that's truly what you're in search of. A lot of times when we ask God questions, we ask God already having decided what the answer is. And then when we don't get discernment on that, we're frustrated because we're like, well, I know that's what God has, 
but no, maybe it's not what God has. That's why you're not getting the total understanding and discernment of what God has for us. So we a lot of times go into a situation thinking we already know the answer. Well, certainly it has to be this in our heads. Therefore, we ask God, but we ask God in a way that says, I've already made up my mind. I already know the answer. So just confirm with me what I already know is the case. That's not the way God works. He may work that way every now and then for you, but 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to be you coming to God with a contrite heart, an open heart, ready to listen to what God has, not having made up your mind, not having decided so that God can make up your mind for you through his absolute discerning will that you can follow it and know, hey, this is exactly what God has for me. Maybe it takes a week. Maybe it takes a month. Maybe it takes two months. Who knows how long it's going to take. But know this, as long as you are praying that you are receptive to God in the direction that he has for your life, you will get the true answer. You will know the direction God wants you to go. And in the meantime, it gives you a chance to stay as close to God and as ever ready to listen to what he has to say. The last verse I'm going to leave you with this morning is going to be Jeremiah 33, 3. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 33, 3. And remember this as a Christian, when you're in a dark place, when you're asking God for discernment, when you're listening, when you're waiting, when you want God to give you the answer, Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. But that verse says a whole lot more than just call unto me. That verse means if you call unto me with the right heart, the right spirit, with the right discerning will for, for God's will, not discerning your own desires or your own thoughts or your own ways, but desiring God's thoughts and God's ways and God's will, he says, call unto me. Meaning, I call unto you, God. I ask you. You're the one that knows the answer. You're the one that knows exactly what's around the corner. So please show me exactly what you want. And I'm not going to make my mind up. I'm not going to be decided about something. I'm going to let you let me know exactly the direction that you want me to go. That's unfortunately just not what we do in life as Christians or non-Christians. We just want instant answers. We want an answer and that's it, even if it's wrong. I just want an answer. I want to feel good about the decision I made and I want to move on. Well, if you want to feel good about the decision that you're going to make, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Call unto God, seek his will, have an open heart, ready to follow his will wherever it might, might lead, even if it's the answer you weren't expecting, even if it's the direction you were not ready to go, even if it's the will that you did not believe was going to be the right will of God, but it turns out that it is, the minute you get that understanding, you follow it, no matter how difficult it may seem, no matter how... Uh, different it was from your own personal views about the situation, you follow God wherever he may lead. That's how you find the true will of God. That's how you follow him wherever he may take you. And that's how you know exactly that God is in your corner. He is leading you. He's guiding you because you are waiting and you're listening. We have to listen to the Lord direct our path. Thank you for listening this morning. I hope you have an incredible 4th of July or 5th of July now. I hope you had an incredible 4th of July yesterday, enjoyed your holiday and uh, celebrated independence. And I hope that this week you go out and you celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ and the independence you got when you accepted him as personal savior and the blood that he sacrificed on the cross of Calvary for our true freedom and our true absolute uh, freedom from sin, not because we're no longer sinners, but we're free from from the penalty of sin. So if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, please do so before it's everlastingly too late. Thank you for all that you uh, do as a church body for me and as you're listening to these devotionals and those that are not members. Thank you for coming every week and listening to every one of our men who uh, do these devotionals. We pray that they are exactly what you need to get you through your week and pray that they're exactly the information that God needs to bestow upon you and your families. God bless you. We love you. I'm going to dismiss us in a word of prayer and have an incredible rest of your day. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come to uh, gather and, and worship you, Lord. And we thank you for these devotions that these men give to us every week. We thank you for their study. We thank you for their time that they uh, uh, put in to give us these words that we need to be able to share them with a lost and dying world and find uh, the will and discernment of, uh, of your uh, desire for our life as a church body, as well as as a group of believers. Lord, I just pray that if there's somebody that comes into our path today, that we don't, that we have the opportunity to tell you about uh, Jesus Christ and they don't know you as personal Savior, that we would say or do or, or give them the information that they would need to discern uh, that they need to be saved and that they need to follow you and that they need to put their faith and trust in you alone. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for guiding us. And thank you for protecting us. And we ask all these things in your precious name we pray. Amen. God bless. Go be Christ in somebody's life today.